Welcome back to the Subspace Games YouTube channel. We may as well do two videos in a day, um, just because the next video I think is going to be pretty easy. Let's add some crosshairs to the uh, display. So we're going to be working with the the HUD or the heads-up display. Um, just some cool things you can do with it, but we'll keep it simple. So the first thing is that I don't have any uh, any set work or a desktop for doing this, so I just um, over on the side here I just switch this to the HUD editor and we don't have a HUD template so click on the button click OK let's call this main HUD and so what we're going to do is um, we want to add a crosshair and so this is going to be a component so let's right click on components uh, well a little bit of so the idea behind the HUD is you've got some um, components, you have timers and actions. Um, like I said, we'll go into some more detail, but basically, um, you know, you have the ability so that when you click on something, it performs some actions. You can act actually get pretty complex on some of the things that you can fire off from the HUD. Um, the components are just like buttons and um, scroll bars and things like that, things that you can visually see. Um, so we're going to keep it real simple. We'll, we're just going to add a crosshair, which is just a simple component. Let's call the name of this crosshair. Uh, this The type is not going to be a label. It's actually just going to be a container. Uh, we definitely want it to be visible. We want it to be active. Position 50-50 means that it's right in the middle of the screen. It's 50% um, across and 50% up. We want the origin to be the center. This is um, the origin of this box. So 50-50 means that the center of this box will be right at the center of the screen. If we move this to like left or whatever, it's going to move the um, origin of the container accordingly. Um, size, let's go ahead and put this down at 5. So just a little box there. And let's see here. What else do we got? We'll set that the viewport aspect ratio independent. So um, it means that uh, it's not going to skew it as you saw. It was 5 by 5, but it looked more like a rectangle. Um, so we're going to um, make it so it's independent, so it's a square. Let's also um, adjust to nearest pixel so it kind of, rather than interpolating, it just fits and then ignored by mouse because we don't want the mouse to deal with this. It's just crosshair. Okay, so switching over to the appearance tab. Um, yep, shape is a rectangle. We don't want to do any kind of um, corner radiuses or anything like that. Um, go ahead and leave the blend mode the way it is. Um, we are going to add a texture here, so let's go ahead and import a texture real quick. So import texture, and I have that in, let's see here, right here. Uh, keep original size, yes that's good. No, everything's good. So we'll hit import. We now have the crosshairs here. So if we do for back texture, we should be able to select crosshairs. And so now we have this little X there. And I think that's about it. What else do we need? No, everything's fine. We can set colors and whatnot. In fact, you know what? Let's do on the four color. Let's set it to all zeros. And the border color, let's set this to zero too and zero for the uh, alpha because we basically don't want it to show up at all. Um, let's click OK. Alright, so we now have established our HUD. Let's save it. And close. OK, so let's go over to our scene or the uh, attribute viewer again. Let's load the scene. Now to actually get it into the game we're going to add it into our main AI. So let's jump over to the code desktop. Let's go and open up our main AI and we're going to start this up when the game starts up. So let's go to on in it. Um, this is a HUD call, so HUD and it is a template. What is it? New template instance. And as you can see, what it's asking for is it's asking for a user. Um, the template, a string for the template, and a string for the prefix that we're looking for. 
So let's back up and let's get a, a, a reference to our user. So local um, h user. Oops, this is a call to application. Get current user. We've got that, so let's put h user in here. Now, a string for the template. Okay, so our template is the HUD that we set up. We called it main HUD. And then the prefix is just um, basically how we're going to refer to this template or this HUD because you can actually have the same HUD loaded multiple times. It's just if you're going to be um, referring to each separate one, you have to have a specific name. So we're just going to call this HUD. Now, just a little bit of um, on the user. Um, from what I can tell, the user is whoever, you know, like you can have multiplayer games or whatever, and so each specific user that's um, running in the game could have their own um, HUD or whatever. That's why it's asking for a reference to the user so that you can set up specific HUDs for different, different players. All right, so we've got that in place. Uh, let's see what happens when we hit Control C or Control S to save F7 to compile. Let's run over here. And resource main HUD is not referenced in the application. Okay, so that's one of those things that we need to make sure that we load in. This is the first time we've really had to do this because the HUD is not something we can drag and drop into the scene. Let's go to HUD. And let me see, I can't remember if we... No, I think it's just on the resources tab. So we're going to drag and drop the HUD into the resources tab in the game editor. And what that does is it tells the game that this is a resource that we want to use. We couldn't load it directly into the scene, which is what we've done for all of our other models. But if you're going to be <clears throat> accessing something that isn't specifically loaded into your scene when you're doing design, you need to have it on this resources tab. So let's try and run this again. Okay, so now there you go. Pretty easy to implement. We've got little crosshairs so we can see where we're aiming. Um, obviously the ball isn't necessarily going to go directly where the, the crosshairs um, you know, were aimed because of the trajectory and whatnot. <clears throat> the other thing that uh, we want to do real quick is I don't like the fact that, that, the, um, that the, the crosshairs continue to show up after we fired. The crosshairs are only used for the aim camera, not for the chase cam. So let's change that real quick. Let's switch back over to um, our code tab. And since we want to change the visibility when we uh, launch the ball, let's go over to the aim cam. We're going to do on mouse button down. So one of the things that we want to do is we're going to turn that, um, that crosshair off. So in order to do that, we have to get the component. So let's call this local h crosshair. We're getting a handle to the crosshair component, and this is going to be HUD get component, and it's asking for the user and the tag. So once again, we need to put a reference to the the user. So let's call this H user. Application get current user. So that is H user. And then we need a string to the tag. And the way you work and you do this is because we had set up the prefix um, as HUD, we're going to do HUD dot and then the component that we want. And then we call the component crosshair. So that's how we access that. Now we're going to set the visibility. In order to do that, we do HUD set. Uh, you know what, let's just do visible because it'll come up easier. Oops. Set component visible. So we want the component, which was just the H crosshair that we just set up in the line above. And we want the visibility to be false. So we'll save that. Control S, F7. Now I also want to re-enable the crosshair. So I'm going to copy this section of code and we were resetting um, all everything on the on enter was it on enter frame 
yeah here we go so when it, when the ball became idle it moved everything so after we move all the cameras and let's do this after we set the active camera back to the aim camera let's paste this code in and instead of saying false we're gonna say true Control S F7 let's jump over here and see what we have okay so as you can see we launch the ball the crosshair disappears when the ball resets back to the beginning we should get the crosshair back so we can aim again give it a second there we go so there's a crosshair so real quick down and dirty with the HUD um, there's a lot of stuff that we're gonna do with it um, well not a lot in this game but um, hope you guys are excited I'm excited we're we've made some good progress and uh, just a few more things to do before we start adding some actual components into the game that we can bounce the ball off of and do some real testing so hope you like this video hope it um, uh, made sense please leave me some comments let me know if you have any questions or if something didn't make sense and you want a little bit more clarification um, you know just anything that uh, that has to do with the videos or even if it's not the videos I don't care if you want to know more about me and you know my family and whatnot I mean hey whatever it's fair game the worst I'm gonna do is say sorry I'm not gonna tell you about that but you know I'm pretty open so um, anyways visit my website subspacegames.com feel free to uh, click on any of the ads there to help support what we're doing here. Um, check out the game prototype, check out the forums, um, go to the Shiva website, go to the forums there. Lots of good information, lots of good tutorials. Anyways, hope you enjoyed the video and we'll see you next time.